Hi, and welcome to Marching Madness, the only complete presentation of the Scotch Plains Fanwood High School Raider Marching Band's many competitions and exhibitions during the 1984 band season. I'm your host, John Bischoff, inviting you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'd like to start by, by introducing you to our drum major and majorette, Ron Kramps and Blair Gabbett, along with band presidents Conrad Sung and Kevin Colangelo, as they receive one of the many trophies the band took home this year. Of course, everybody knows what the finished product exhibited by the band looks like, but there is another aspect of marching band which every member is well aware of. Practice. Here we are. Pick those feet up. Uzzolino, get your line straight. Gillette, you hold your clarinet straight up. Here's the salute. Yeah, Ron, that's a dust off your leg. Don't worry about six judges watching you from the booth. You can't look around. Yeah, that's real quick. Way to pick up those horns. Good color guard. Real good. Nice and quick. Good sharp movements. Yeah, fix your hair, honey. Pick your feet up. Slide them straight across. Keep your shoulders up, Danny. Don't look around. Good flags. Move together. Come on, Markowitz. You're looking around. Straight across. Keep those heads up. Color guard, anytime you're ready to smile, remember, your actors out there. Pivot. Get on your right. Good, good. Way to smile, Chris. Got one thing going. The more you get the right notes, Conrad, we'll be fine. Good, man. It looks real good. Now, if only you had your flags up when everybody else was down, that'd be terrific. Get that line straight. It's 1920. You can't move after the 20th step. Good, Brass, but don't move. A lot of enthusiasm there, Newberger. A lot of enthusiasm. You're starting to look like Al Blackwood when you walk around. Pick your feet up. You turn too early. It's a four count turn. You have to pick your feet up. Gail, don't look around. Percussion, you're too loud. Simple players, you have to get on the beat. Now the idea is everybody's supposed to pick their feet up together. Come on, flutes. The flutes have to be parallel to the ground. Good call. Good art. I should clone you two guys. All right, let's do it again. Many weeks of practice were needed to prepare the band for a season filled with games, competitions, and exhibitions, which filled every weekend from September through November. The band's main function is, of course, the presentation of a halftime entertainment during football games. Every single Saturday, the band sits in the stands, braving the splinters and the piercing cold weather as they sit and cheer for our fantastic football team. This year's show, entitled A Tribute to America, is perhaps the most challenging and professional show the band has produced so far. The music includes John Philip Sousa's Stars and Stripes Forever, Laura Lee, Black is the Color of My True Love's Hair, When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again, Shenandoah, and Battle Hymn of the Republic. The show features a brass quartet for Aura Lee, and the soloists include Conrad Soong on flugelhorn and John Bischoff on French horn. squad this year gained a slick new professional look under the direction of advisor Mr. Joseph Reed. While keeping the beat during their solos, the squad also performed several tightly choreographed maneuvers which added to the impact of the whole show.
among the more dramatic moments in this year's show is the presentation of the American flag by Kimba Wilson. Despite high winds, high altitudes, and a flag nearly twice her size, she still managed to keep her balance on the platform during every show. enthusiastically received by audiences everywhere. Mr. T and Mr. Brown seem to have a certain knack of constructing a show which appeals to every good American citizen. Blow that whistle wrong. Now and then I'll take out the old mouthpiece and give it a go again. Here they go! Here we go! The Columbus Day Parade was one of the first major events of the season. Although we didn't practice much, actually not at all, we still came through and put on a respectable show. The band placed third out of all the bands that competed in the Columbus Day Parade. In addition to serving the school and the football team, the band also has a responsibility to the town. Scotch Plains Day was one of the town functions we performed at. Another public event was the Halloween Parade. As you can see, most of the band members wanted to leave in a hurry, and Mr. T was in a frantic rush himself. When he asked us to play the horse, everybody passed on the message to play it double time. The Raider Marching Band, able to accept a challenge, whatever it might be, performed the show in an astounding two minutes and 59 seconds. At homecoming, the twirlers put on a spectacular show, twirling fire at the end of their batons. Although the performance was meant to show the skill and finesse of the squad, while also carrying on homecoming tradition, we know the only reason they used fire was in order to keep warm. Despite the frigid 20 degree temperature, a large crowd turned out to see the twirlers, along with the front squads and the band. Next comes the Home News Festival at Rutgers Stadium, which, in the general opinion of the band members, was one of our best shows. This year, the band will compete at Somerville by tomorrow night, with Galloway that Sunday, and the top of Hannibal will be the to the 28th. They will also appear at the New Jersey, New Jersey Music, Musical Music Education Association State Festival in October the 28th. It will provide the halftime entertainment at the New York Giants Washington Red Redskins football game at the Netherlands. It will be the Scott Spain Sandra Martin Band as they present their tribute to America. You could welcome them, though.
swing flags and twirlers, along with advisor Mrs. Lori Wellman, had to practice daily after school during the season in addition to practicing before school. The color guard and the large flags followed a similar routine under the direction of Mrs. Carol Jakeen. Beginning in January, these groups will be practicing before school every day in preparation for the trip to Toronto. At least one part of the band is always on the move during the show. Formations created by the band include an American flag, the Liberty Bell, and a map of the continental United States with, with percussion in fronts spelling out the letters USA in the middle.
we were the only band present at the festival to receive a standing ovation. Also held in Rutgers Stadium was the Tropicana Bowl, in which the Raiders placed second in their class and fourth overall. After performing a solid show and retiring to the stands to drink all of that free Tropicana orange and grapefruit juice, the band was somewhat disappointed to have been placed behind a band that they had defeated at Somerville. But as Mr. T has often said, your typical judge has no more backbone than a wet strand of linguine. Of course, it was the parents and their support which helped to make all of our activities possible. Once again, we'd like to thank the Music Boosters for their great support. The first real competition we entered was held in Somerville, and although there was no other real competition, Piscataway still managed to sneak away with the Mayor's Trophy. I don't know, everybody that I spoke to thought that we were better. The band still managed to walk away with another superior rating. Next, we have a shot of Ron and Blair's salute. The salute begins the show and also confirms the band's readiness to enter the field in competition. But where? And now I think that maneuver in itself should have earned a mayor's trophy. The Scataway competition was another difficult one, but the band once again rose to the challenge. The band's superior performance placed us third out of all competing bands there. By this time, the Raiders were beginning to get a little fed up with certain out-of-state bands, whose names I can't seem to remember at the moment, but the reputation of the Raiders was uncompromised by poor sportsmanship. The New Jersey State Music Education Association sponsored an exhibition of the 10 best bands in the state and once again, the Raiders were invited to attend for the third year. As you can see, musicians have an uncanny knack for making the best of any situation, even fundraising. No band tape would be complete without some footage of the real band. Fundraising is an essential part of every band member's life, and it is absolutely necessary for reaching our ultimate goal of performing in the music evaluation in Toronto. In addition to our paper drives, the band will also sell anything from candles to magazines to cheese and grapefruit. The music boosters also get into the act by selling raffle tickets, jackets, and buying anything from candles to magazines to cheese and grapefruit. Last year, 
At Ocean City, our efforts were paid off many times over, when the chorus, the competing bands, the jazz band, and the fronts, including the flag squad, twirlers, swing flags, and color guard, all competed separately, bringing home a total of 14 trophies. The highlight of this year's season, in everybody's opinion, was the pre-game and halftime shows performed at Giants Stadium. It was certainly a fantastic feeling to step onto that turf in front of an audience of over 76,000 people. The most surprising thing was that almost everybody watched. Uh, just listen to these comments from Giants fans and band parents alike. They look really sharp out there. One unexpected problem that the band faced when marching onto the field concerned lining up in formation on the hash marks. The band usually has no trouble forming straight lines. It was just that nobody could really locate the hash marks because the high school football field is laid out differently than the professional football field. After a shaky start, however, the band was able to pull it together and complete the rest of the show with minimal distortion. This footage, taken from the top of Giant Stadium, clearly shows the movement and many formations of the band as they were meant to be seen. Unfortunately, in front of a crowd of 76,000 people, the sound of the band seems somewhat diminished. However, the musicians should be credited with playing a show which was heard throughout the stadium's farthest reaches. The reputation the Raiders have as a superior show... Uh, pardon me. I excuse me, sir? Sir? Sir, would you mind sitting down? Sir, you're blocking our tapes. Sir? Yes, you. Uh, thank you. Uh, as I was saying, the reputation the Raiders have as a superior show band is spread and reinforced by performances such as this one. Upon returning home, the music department received many letters of appreciation for our performance, including an invitation to play at the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, the team which sent us this invitation never made it to the playoffs, but it was the thought that counted.
the experience of being part of performances like this is only part of the appeal which draws students into marching band. Because the number of students in the band has grown so large in the last several years, you could not really classify it as one big family. It's more like a community filled with pride, spirit, and determination. A number of inside jokes and experiences shared by band members also bonds the group together. This past year, we all had to endure such ordeals as preparatory calisthenics on Evergreen Field, a memorable week in October filled with two games, a parade, a festival, and a competition, an entire field show rehearsal scaled down to fit in the old gym, and Mr. T's struggle to master the <laughs> megaphone. This just about wraps up our presentation of the 1984 fall marching band season, but we would like to mention just one more thing before we go. The entire music department will be traveling to Toronto, Canada in the spring in order to, to participate in a musical evaluation of all groups involved in the program. The group depends heavily on community support to lighten the burden of paying for such an extraordinary musical experience. We thank everyone for the support they've given us so far, and we ask you to continue taking part in our fundraisers, because one thing you can be sure of, 
The Raiders will be back next year, knocking on your doors, marching through your streets, and representing your town in every show that they perform. We hope you enjoyed our presentation, and we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you, and good night. Hey, look, they're getting a standing ovation. No, they're not. The football team just came on. Oh.